just thank you this morning for this wonderful time together again. And thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your special presence that comes, that speaks to our hearts, that encourages us, that strengthens us when we're weak, that encourages us, that pours water onto the dry ground. Thank you, Lord, this morning we might be thirsty. We might be in deep need. Even as we watch on the internet, there are things going on in your life. But this morning, God has the answer. Jesus is the answer. He's the one that comes to heal, to make things straight, and to work a good work in our hearts this morning. So, Lord, we just ask you to have your way in this service. Bless the worship. May our communion be sweet. And may the word be challenging and building us up in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand in the victory of our King. We stand in the victory that was won at the cross of Calvary. That has granted us freedom. That has granted us a way into his presence this morning. We can stand and we can declare that victory this morning in Christ. Our God has proven time and time again. He will never fail us. Yes, we've not been together for a few weeks. But has he not presented himself amongst his people through the stream? through the fellowship at home that we've had with our families. This morning, we can declare the victory and the battle belongs to our Lord. Amen? Do we believe that this morning? Amen? Amen. We are allowed to speak. <laughs> I encourage you this morning to lift your hearts to the King of Kings. I encourage you this morning to worship Him with all that you have this morning. Because he is everything and because of him we can declare the victory we have this morning. Amen. And if you want to, you can stand, but this morning I pray, worship your king. Thank you, Jesus. falls, it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph And my God will never fail Yes, my God will never fail The weapon may be formed, like sing The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper When the dawn is full it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to try My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail Cause I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory I'm going to see a victory I'm going to see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord There's power in the mighty name of Jesus
meant for evil And you turn it for good Is she turn it for good? I believe you, Lord You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good Is she turn it for good? This morning, church, the cross was meant to be evil It was meant to dispel the end of our King But God took what was evil, turned it on its head And turned it around for our good this morning that is the ultimate show, the ultimate example of what we are singing this morning. If that's in your heart this morning, if that's something that you're passionate about, then I pray this morning that you release that in the spirit of the living God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yes. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You should turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good You turn it for good I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh, I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory For the battle What the enemy, let's say You see what the enemy meant for evil But you turn it for good You turn it for good You see what the enemy meant for evil But you turn it for good You turn it for good I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see
A thousand times I failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again? Still I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all faith. that we're singing this morning. Sing that verse again, a thousand times I fail. A thousand times I fail, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades, never ends. Your glory goes beyond all pain. Thank you, Jesus. You will above all else, till my purpose remains. The art of losing myself. Yeah.
heart and my soul Would I give you control To consume me from the inside out So let justice and praise Will become my embrace To love you from the inside out Shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all faith, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out. Of my soul cries out. Forever he will be The Lamb upon the throne Sagalali bow the knee And I worship you alone The glory of the risen Who can compare With the beauty of the Lord Forever He will be The Lamb upon the throne My gladly by the knee I worship Him alone And I will proclaim The glory
Yes, I gladly bow the knee. I gladly bow the knee. I don't worship you, Lord. Time forever he will be. in tongues and so we're going to just wait on the Lord for the interpretation my heart is stirred by a noble theme it's the greatness and majesty of my God I'm stirred deep inside as I think about the measureless wonder of his power the impossibleness of what he does every day even as the sun rises and sets and as the moon and the planets in their courses circle in measurable numbers of miles away in perfect unison. And God says to you, if I am able to order this, do you not think that I can help you in ordering what troubles you? Do you not think that the God of the heavens, the God who created heaven and earth, the God who put you together, who knit you together in your mother's womb, do you think he with his power, with his omniscience, his total understanding, you think he cannot reach down to you? Of course he can. Will you not put your trust in him today? Will you not put your faith in him today? Will you not just reach out and say, Dear God, will you come to me today in my need, in my joy, in whatever I bring to you? Dear God, come and meet me today. And of course he will do that. Of course he will hear you and he will answer your prayer with his measureless, unlimited, totally immeasurable extent of his love. Amen. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the gifts of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us this morning. Lord, we do acknowledge you. We do thank you, Lord, that you are in total control. Thank you, Lord, this morning. As we are encouraged through your message, Lord.
of the goodness of God. Let's sing that again. Never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will see of the good. darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend Oh, I have lived in the goodness of God So my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I have made And I will sing of the goodness of God All my life, let's sing All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been She's running after, he's running after me. Your goodness is running after, she's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrounded now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, she's running after me. Your goodness is running after. She's running after, she's running after me My life laid down, I'm surrounded now I give you everything Your goodness is running after, she's running after me And so my life, you have been fed So good every breath that I am in I will sing of the goodness One more time, your goodness Your goodness is running out It's running out to me Your goodness is running out Running after, running after me With 
my life laid down I'm surrounded now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me And all my life you have been faithful Before we come to the table, come on All my life you have been so so good that every breath that I am made I will see of the goodness of God oh, I will see of the goodness of God It's fantastic so We're going to hear from God's word this morning and uh Brother Scott's going to come and bring it, so let's just pray for him. Yes, Lord, thank you that Lord, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. And thank you, Lord, you've given us gifted people to expound it and to bring it to us. Ordinary people, different characters, but Lord, you speak through each character and each person that comes to bring your word. Thank you, Lord. May you bless it now to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Anoint Scott, Lord, and bless him. Morning, church. How are we? Hey. So, we enter a season that is a highlight for believers all around the world. Yes, we're in December. It's Christmas. A season of goodwill and peace to all men. A time of year that should bring us closer together as friends and family. But being close together has been a difficult thing to achieve this year. The majority of 2020 has been a year of mostly separation for friends and families. And as Christmas looms, there is no real guarantee to how it will all pan out this year. It's still everything is up in the air. Things are changing every day. But thankfully, this time of year, this season, Christmas has a greater message to it. This season provides more depth and spiritual insight that particularly this year has needed to be evident in our walks. That's where we start today. If you've got your Bibles, turn to Hebrews 12, verse 2, that says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In this uncertain, wobbly, up-and-down time that we are in, despite circumstances, despite not knowing what tomorrow may bring, we can still find hope in Jesus this morning. He says, look unto Jesus. How do we do that this morning? I want to give you four ideas on how we look to Jesus. Firstly, we look to Jesus in everything. In everything. Acts 17, 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our breathing. Far too often, we're quite happily to look to Jesus when things are going great. We can worship, we can praise him when everything is going our way. And as this year has shown, and this season reminds us, we need to be looking to Jesus in the good and the bad. There's no denying, as we're winding up 2020, this has been a difficult year. We have faced many challenges, individually and as a church. But whether we're on the mountaintop or in the valleys, in triumph or in trial, we need to be looking to Jesus. Far too often when disaster strikes, we try to lean on our own finite strength and fail. Hebrews reminds us that when we look to Jesus in everything, we obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's Hebrews 4.16. In every season, in every trial, tribulation, he is more than enough. He is sufficient no matter what we face. The season of Christmas may not be what we want it to be this year in regards to our friends and our families. But as we approach this season, yes, in everything, we look to Christ as the center and make that the focus no matter what's going on. So that's looking to Jesus in everything. Now we look to Jesus for everything, okay? The need this year has been great for many people. 
been thinking a lot about this year <laughs> and the things that we've had. Um, financially, we know our economy isn't great. Individually, I imagine we have felt the sting of lockdown and not being able to work for some of us, not being able to see families and friends. Families that are on the front line that we've had to distance ourselves from because of their job and what they've been doing. The wonderful work that they've been doing. And it's had this knock-on effect down the line. I'm encouraged when we look at John 14 where he says, in verse 13, he says, Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. We have to learn to depend on Jesus to supply all our needs. Self-effort, relying on others, isn't secure enough an option. Hands up if you're a human this morning. Hands up if you're a human with faults and failings. <laughs> Jesus would not put his hand up to be in one who has faults and failings. He is the secure option. He's the one who will supply all our needs, no matter what they may be. Finances, food, clothing, shelter. Jesus is the one who can meet our needs. And we look to Jesus for everything. Philippians 4.19 says his promises are ample to supply for all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He can meet our ample needs this morning according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I will stress again, as I have done when these kind of scriptures have come up, I am not naming it and claiming it. This is not a name it and claim it thing. I don't believe in name it and claim it. What I believe this morning is practical living in the presence of Christ. Realistic needs. Not things we just want. It's according to his will and not my own. As I pray for the things that I need, not wants, things I need, he will meet those needs. Do I need the bills to be met this month? Do I need a mortgage paid? I believe he will meet that need. Am I struggling to provide food for my family? I believe he will meet the need. It's things like that that I can trust Christ with. And granted, I don't always. Very often, I don't at all. <laughs> this is much a learning curve for me as everyone else this year. But this year has put us in this position where we have had to learn to rely on Christ for everything. So, thirdly, we look to Jesus with everything. Isaiah 29, 13 says, And the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. To look to Jesus with everything is to look to Jesus bare before him. Okay? All our hopes, all our fears, worries, anxieties, insecurities, nothing is off limits to Jesus. When we look to him with everything, we display him everything. All of the good and all of the bad. You know why? Because he says, come as you are. Not as you'd like to be. Not as that person over there. But as you are right now. And that's a fearful thing to do before the Lord Almighty. Sometimes we can feel shame. And we just can't do it. And like Adam and Eve in Eden, we can, I mean, we've got more clothes on than they have. But like Adam and Eve in Eden, we can run and hide. Try to cover ourselves. But Christ has died for our shame. He died that we could be set free. And by his grace, that wonderful gift we didn't deserve, we can come as we are and bear our all before him this will lead on to the next point but to not do this is binding it's restricting but to look to Jesus with everything brings real freedom and he did he not come to set the captives free did he not come to release the chains that bind us down these fears these anxieties these insecurities have we felt them this year? I think most of us would say we have, in one way or another. We've been worried about things, stressing about things. I've been worried about things quite recently. <laughs> My house. <laughs> but I've been learning in the process to look to him with everything. 
all the frustrations. <laughs> so the final point sums up all three, but it opens up this last one that we just talked about. To look to Jesus through everything. This one summarizes the other three, without a doubt. 1 Peter 5.10, we've been doing it in house group, and there's been a few scriptures that have really popped up. Uh, 1 Peter 5.10 says, After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish. 2020. One reflection this year. Sucked. <laughs> it's been tough. <laughs> The lockdowns have made life difficult. The things that we face as a country, as a race of people, because it isn't just affecting us here in Cheadle. This is all around the world. But the lesson that has resonated throughout this year, from the very start of it, in March, right the way through, has been the sovereignty of God. And the hope that we have found in his sovereignty. When I mean sovereignty, I'm talking about God being the supreme, ultimate ruler over all things in this universe. Not just this world, this universe. Everything he holds in the palm of his hand. This entire universe that scientists have spent hundreds of years trying to understand he holds in the palm of his hand. We may not always understand what's going on. And sometimes, even as believers, we might take up issue with God. You're not alone. Job did the same. <laughs> but we might take up issue with him for not ending this suffering now. For not changing the situation. We may moan and complain about what's happening or even blame God in certain situations. We miss the bigger picture. His sovereignty. The situations surrounding us don't limit God's control or design or purpose for this season that we are in. No, sometimes it's actually a season God is allowing in order that our faith is strengthened. And we tune our perspective onto God's purpose for us. We must, regardless of what's going on around us, be patient and trust in the Lord. Continue to seek his purpose. And 1 Peter 4.13 says, and we are to rejoice in the Lord. Again, 1 Peter 4.13, Peter advises as we travel through these seasons, the ups and the downs, that we are to rejoice in as much as we are partakers of Christ's sufferings. The wonderful thing this morning is, though we have not been taken out of the situation, Christ is in the situation. He is fully man and fully God, which means he has experienced everything in his humanity. He understands, he sympathizes with us. It goes on in Hebrews 12, if we go back to that scripture. In Hebrews 12, 2. Oh, I took my bookmark out. <laughs> it goes on to say, He endured the cross, despised and shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What is he doing at the right hand of the throne of God right now, this very minute? Sympathizing and mediating on our behalf. His work on earth continued into heaven. He didn't just leave us to it. This year of 2020 has proven that God has been with us. Are we still here as a church? Yes. Have we done that by his grace or by our own strength? No, his grace. It's by his mercy that we are here this morning. So God's sovereignty, his design and purpose isn't limited by what's going on around us. We can trust in his design. We can trust in the purpose and plan he has for us in this season. It's not easy. I know it's so easy to say it from up here. God's in control. Don't panic. <laughs> but that's the fact of the matter. That as our faith strengthens as we believe that, we start to see God at work. We start to see where God's moving. We start to see these little victories coming through. So in conclusion, this wasn't a long one this morning. Hebrews says we are to look to Jesus. And I think there's four things we can think about. We can look to him in everything, for everything, with everything, and through everything. We should look to him. Our eyes are not on the superficial. 
this season should be a reminder of that. Yes, it's wonderful to have gifts. It's wonderful to give gifts to family. But this season isn't about that. This season is about keeping our eyes on the reason for the season, which is Jesus. Principle we must adopt, not just once a year. But as 2020 has shown, this is a principle we must adopt throughout the year. And this Christmas season reminds us of this. It hasn't been the worst year as a human race. I'm not saying it has. I mean, there have been years of world war, of famine, poverty, economical disputes, financial breakdowns. There have been far worse things happen. But it doesn't change the fact that in the present, this is the worst thing that we are facing at the minute and the worst thing that we have had to face, and the outcome of all that we have had to face. The circumstances surrounding 2020 affect us today, and they knock on to tomorrow. Yet in and for and with and through everything have we looked to Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, as Hebrew says. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen? Amen. I'll pass you on to Chris. <laughs> That was a good, good word. And incidentally, I think it says in that scripture, there's a race set before us, a road, a path. And on that path, on that road, that race, we are looking to Jesus. If we take our eyes off him, we end up like Peter, get out of the boat on the waves and start to sink. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus, on those four points. And practical living, I think Scott talked about. And uh, giving all, everything over to him brings complete freedom. So... Let's do that, put it into practice. Incidentally, we've also got a magazine on there, our church magazine. If you want one, take it. It's just on the table at the end there. I think we've got enough, Isaac, have we? <laughs> well, there's some magazines on there anyway. It's also on our Facebook page if you want to read it. So the guys are going to lead us in a bit more worship. Okay? Yeah, Over to you, Mr. God's and his son. They call him Jesus. He came to us. He will forgive. He lived and died to us. My pardon and empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives. Sacrifice to
Yes, I'll cross that river And I'll fight life's fight Final war with pain And then I stand Oh, gives way to me Spirit, be with us now and remain with us and be with us forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, friends, and be blessed this week.